Hey, and welcome to The Office Field Guide. My name's Chris, and I'm reviewing every episode of The Office ever. Today, we are looking at safety training. Depression? Isn't that just a fancy word for feeling bummed out? Dwight, you ignorant slut! I just figured a lot of people were gonna be here just for that clip. So with that one out of the way, let's jump right into this. Safety Training was written by BJ Novak, which might be why he has a ton of good lines in this episode. Come on! Will I be too warm in a long sleeve tea? Anyway, it was directed by Harold Ramis, who also directed these episodes. Safety Training first aired on April 12, 2007, was viewed by 7.7 .7 million people, and currently has an 8.8 .8 out of 10 on IMDb. And your trivia for today is... What are the two names that Michael incorrectly refers to Madge as in this episode? As always, look out for the hidden mic or floating Andy in this video. The first to put the correct answer to the trivia in the comments and the first to find the Easter egg will get their names in next week's video. We have a lot to get to, so let's kick off the training. No one uh, asked you anything ever. All right, so first up, I love the choice of not immediately revealing what's wrong with Daryl's leg. Hey, Daryl, how's it hanging? <laughs> but with that moment, we can read between the lines and assume that corporate is mandating the safety training because of Michael's actions, just like Diversity Day, sexual harassment, and gay witch hunt. So end of day, we are going to have a little diversity policy freshener because of some more problems at the Scranton branch. And having both worked in a warehouse and an office, these are pretty spot on. The only difference for me is that I'd rather listen to Toby ramble about wearing extra layers of clothes if I get cold rather than watch another corporate web-based training module on ergonomics. It is ergonomically correct. It's a good chair. So it's still 2007 when this episode was shot, and though YouTube was established in 2005, viral videos on the internet were still a new thing. So unless Michael watched a lot of trampoline fail videos on America's Funniest Home Videos, he might not have realized how dumb what he was about to do really is. I land on the trampoline, take a couple extra bounces for fun, I climb off, walk around the corner, ta freaking da! And while we're talking about what it was like in 2007, Netflix used to be a lot of fun. I go online, I go click, 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 and I change the order of the queue so that I can see Love Actually as soon as I want to. It's so easy, Ryan. I've always really appreciated the filming of this episode. It really does bring the outside of the office alive. I've always had a hard time with these train tracks though, as this definitely gives me a bigger city vibe, and it should because this is Van Nuys, but I did a little research and Scranton does have a pretty thick railroad system. Anyway, one criticism I do have here is that something may have gone a little haywire while editing this episode. The outside portions are a little odd. And while they're hilarious and the highlights of this episode, they just don't feel right. And I think it's because they took the footage that they had and they played with the narrative a bit. Might even bring my parents tomorrow to the matinee. And that is why I oh, am going to jump off my favorite this part. roof. And there's this moment where Michael's clearly talking, but no audio comes through. You can't do that because you're going to get horribly, horribly injured. Either way, this episode has some rapid-fire humor. The offices of James P. Albini, see if he handles hate crimes. Got it. Also, take apart the trampoline, stick it in the baler. We're not allowed to use the baler. Have p do it, or the sea monster. But I love how Michael thinks quickly through damage control. It's an excellent bit, and it is a great setup for the next episode. It also contains a great callback to Michael's lawyer. This is my lawyer, James P. Albini. And it's a great callback to what Michael thinks a hate crime is am a victim of a hate crime. Stanley knows what I'm talking about. That's not what a hate crime is. Well, I hated it a lot, okay, I... And while we're on callbacks, I noticed that this is the first episode I ever spotted He Day in. And for context, this is the robot that Dwight's talking about. Female robot, they're only available in Japan. Dwight I'll put the link to the Wikipedia page in the description. Wikipedia is the best thing ever never gets old. I'll say that I was always a little confused about the timeline of Andy's vehicles, as we know he was driving the Xterra when he first arrived in Scranton. Actually, it is, it's Latin for Earth. Oh, so, so you drive an X-Earth. Yeah, that makes sense. But then it's established later that he drives a Prius, so he swung completely in the opposite direction, and this is why. And I have a new car, Toyota Prius, because Andy didn't care about fuel efficiency, but Drew, has seen an inconvenient truth nearly twice. 
Okay, and with that, let's dive into the deeper meaning. Why don't you explain this to me like I'm five? All right, and this episode is deep. And just like the psyche of your average office worker, we're gonna really need to unpack a lot to get the full scope. But I'm gonna give you the 10,000 foot view I think this episode is all about, and that is belonging. Michael clearly doesn't belong in the warehouse. Baylor, I hardly know her. Damn it, Michael, pay attention, man. Hey. Daryl and his warehouse crew clearly don't belong in the office. We out of here. Daryl, I did not walk out in the middle of yours, so yeah, I- Yeah, but all I, this was real, Michael. Yes. The office is where Michael belongs, and I have to say that Steve Carell is doing some next level stuff here. Make him feel like wimps. Not me. I- Hello, I'm Michael. Welcome to Men's Warehouse. Can you just imagine being in the room with him when he's doing this bit? It's the silence and the prep work that you could just see his brains turning. Anyway, back to belonging. Jim belongs at Pam's desk. He's not there. He has spent hours up here at reception with you. Hours and hours. Okay, okay. No, constantly, like for- Kevin belongs at a casino, but he does not belong at an accountant's desk. 10. Really, 10, that's your guess. You're a professional accountant. There's like 10 green ones. Andy's doing his best to belong in the office. Whoa, what's the situation? Unshun. And Karen's realizing that she doesn't belong in the office. I don't know this place as well as I thought I did. What Daniel's even saying that the sequence outside shows Jim and Pam are dealing with Michael like a divorced couple dealing with a child and Karen would fill the role of a new wife feeling a bit left out. With a backdrop of mundane to serious safety concerns, Michael's reasoning for even being up on the roof evolves from wanting to demonstrate how serious his job is. And they freak out and they get to see the dangers of depression with their own eyes. Nice side note, they might think, hey, I should have been nicer to Michael. But then inevitably becomes about wanting a reason to get up in the morning. But I never said you had nothing to live for. What do I have to live for? Some people are lone wolves, but humans are a social creature, and I think the message of this episode isn't that Michael didn't jump because Daryl had some wise words for him. And it surely wasn't Ryan or Andy's in these deleted scenes. You have always taken a great interest in my career. I will miss you the most, Ryan. Oh, what is your deal, man? Seriously, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't get it. If you do jump, I want you to reach for the sky. Okay, careful. Oh, grab a comet. Kiss the moon! And to be clear, the topic of suicide is an extremely serious one. But as the office so masterfully does with serious topics like racism, sexism, and so on and so forth, oh. Oh. Michael didn't jump because he realized that people see him. It's an absurd and over-the-top way of demonstrating that relationships with one another can bring a sense of belonging. I saved a life. My own. Am I a hero? I really can't say, but yes. Michael's stupidity doesn't bring the intended results of showing the dangers of the American office. Still, it does demonstrate the entire show's thesis, which is merely ordinary people doing ordinary things together can have some beautiful results. An office is as safe as the people in it. And sometimes those people can drive you to do crazy things. Or I don't know, maybe this whole episode exists to show off how good Dwight is at making up lyrics on the spot. Michael is awesome! Woo! Jumping off the roof! Woo! Bouncing on a bouncer! Woo! Show him who's boss! Woo! Rip a hole in the sun! Woo! I'm For real, I'm not sure he gets enough credit. I was watching The Fire last night with my family, and I just appreciate how quickly he comes up with alternative lyrics. But with that, let's dish out some dundies. And then I gotta get him to the dundies. The dundie for the best SNL reference goes to Michael Scott. Depressed? Isn't that just a fancy word for feeling bummed out? Dwight, you ignorant slut! If you didn't know, this is a reference to SNL, one of Michael's favorite go-tos. But you wouldn't know about that, Dan, because there's no old saying about what's behind a miserable failure. <laughs> Jane, you ignorant slut. And the Dundee for quick thinking goes to Daryl Philbin. To get out of bed every single day, knowing full well, you gotta be you. Have you ever been in a situation like that where you had to really quickly think of good things to say about someone? 
can be a rough spot. But good job, Daryl. And with that, let's rate this thing. What gives what? What gives you the right? Okay, so I have a lot of thoughts on this episode, but for the cold opening, I give this one a three out of five. It's fine. There's nothing extremely memorable about this. I see some hate for Jim online, refusing to call Andy Drew, but I guess there's just two kinds of people. No, I'm not gonna call you that. Oh, Drew, sorry. Or maybe three. Jim, could you please inform Andy Bernard that he is being shunned? As for the episode itself, this is where I'm gonna get myself into a little bit of trouble. Let me give the rating first. I give this one a four out of five, and I battled with this one, to be honest with you. I'm not a fan of this episode, and I never have been on any previous rewatch, and I actually intended to kind of shred this episode a bit. But before you go leaving me some hate in the comments, I found this poll from 2008 on the Office Tally website placing safety training as one of the lowest ranked episodes of season three. And that's not to say everyone disliked it because upon airing it did really well critically. I just think it's definitely an episode that's grown on the fandom over the years. What I discovered is that the first half of this episode is what gave me the issues. The buildup to this one is very slow and very depressing. And whenever the humor and the storytelling hinges on Toby, it's gonna be hit or miss. But you've heard me say this before, I love Toby most of the time. No more s'mores. No more <laughs> s'mores. I landed on four out of five on this one after rewatching it more critically because this episode is extremely well put together. The subplot of Andy's return, Dwight and Andy's power struggle, the office betting, which does some callbacks to the feelings of the office Olympics, and then Michael needing to literally be talked off the edge really does some good stuff for the heart. I brave heart. I am. Not to mention that there's not a break in the pace. It starts slow and it slowly revs up until hitting the climax and then leaves the whole thing resolved. That's what she said. And you know Michael's not okay but you're also filled with a sense that he's gonna be okay because he's got people in his life. But that's just what I think about safety training. What are your thoughts? I have a particular thing I'd like to ask you in the comments. Imagine that you have the bullhorn instead of Daryl. What do you say to Michael to get him off that roof? Jim tried reason, Pam tried bribery, Dwight didn't really try, and Daryl went with flattery. So what do you go with? Let me hear from you in the comments on that, the trivia, the Easter egg, and whatever else you want to say. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, hit the bell button, and you'll be notified next week when we look at the product recall episode. This puts us at threat level midnight. So with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.